All right, welcome to the Monterey Bay Career Connect virtual workshop. My name is Haley Mears. I'm the Workforce Development Program Manager with the Monterey Bay Economic Partnership. Um, a little bit about my background. I have my master's in education counseling and prior to working with MBEP, I was an academic advisor at UC Santa Cruz and I also worked with Santa Cruz City Schools. And I want to also introduce my workforce development associate, Megan. Let's go ahead and introduce yourself, Megan. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Megan Guidi. I am the workforce development associate with the Monterey Bay Economic Partnership. Um, I also work as a career counselor for a university. Remotely, I just finished my master's in college counseling and student development. So I'm passionate about helping students get to their next steps in life. Um, that's why I'm so excited to work with Monterey Bay Career Connect and tell you more about it today. So a few housekeeping notes. This is a webinar, so it's being recorded and we will share the recording with you um, after we're done with this workshop. And you can submit questions uh, via the question um, box and we'll get to those at the end. We're hoping that today we'll cover enough content that you won't have a lot of questions at the end, but feel free to submit them. And if we have time, we'll get to those. And just to share a little bit about our website and why we have this. So one of MBEP's goal um, is that every student and family feels supported to make informed choices about making decisions about to pursuing college and career um, or credentials. And so we want to make sure every student has the option to participate and use our resources. Everything on our site is free for uh, students, families, educators to use. Um, we want to encourage students to find their career pathways uh, locally in the Monterey Bay region, find work-based learning experiences, and have access to tools and information about college and career readiness. Um, and so with that, I'm going to go ahead and just start a brief overview of our website. So this is the homepage, mbcareerconnect.org, and we'll be sharing some of these uh, links in the chat so you'll be able to follow along. Um, and so from our website, you will see we have built this out so we can guide users through the site based on who you are, whether you're a high school student, a college student, maybe you're a graduate student looking for work, um, an educator or teacher, or even a parent who is teaching from home, an employer and a job seeker. And so a few things you'll see if you're a high school student, this page here, is built out with a lot of information about how to prepare for college, um, how to apply for financial aid, find local scholarships, those types of things uh, that you will need to uh, do in preparation for your college plans. We also have a lot of information here about skills and we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but there's also information, just uh, be aware of internships, apprenticeships, and graduate schools. And you can click on these yellow buttons and these would all take you out to links where you would find additional resources. We also have information for educators. So scrolling back down here, if you're an educator, you will find that we've built out our website with several resources for educators, uh, which includes a toolkit on how to use some of the resources on our website. Um, these can be downloaded as a PDF or as a Word doc. Um, if you're working with um, Spanish speaking students, um, there's a way to translate the site into Spanish. And so we have some steps here on how to do that. And we also have a lot of information about um, equity resources, uh, local resources to help you with your students and a lot of online resources now that everyone is moving into this world of remote education and remote work. Um, so it's a pretty long web page. We've got tons of information here. You'll see these can all link out um, into, you know, for example, if you want to find more information at each county, um, Department of Rehabilitation Services, Foster Youth, et cetera, and then our, all of our online resources. So it's all kind of an alphabetical order here. We also encourage um, all of our educators to sign up for our quarterly newsletter. This newsletter, you'll find um, there's a pop-up that just showed up a couple minutes earlier, but we also have a link here this newsletter goes out four times a year and we provide a lot of updates on what's going on in workforce, uh, career pathways, different types of events and workshops such as the one today that would be helpful for you or your students to attend. 
Um, it's really geared towards teachers, so we encourage you guys to sign up if you're a teacher watching and joining with us today. All right, and with that, we're going to um, go back to our homepage and dig in a little more on job seeker resources because the focus of our workshop today is really to help students and job seekers uh, learn more about how to use our tools in your job search. So I'm gonna hand it over to Megan. Thanks, Haley. Um, yeah, so like Haley was saying, we have lots of new job seeker resources. We kind of fleshed out the website in response to COVID-19. So you'll see at the top here that we have our in-demand COVID-19 jobs. So these include contact tracing as well as the training for that. Um, and then going down just a little bit, we have our healthcare positions that are available and training available both nationwide remotely as well as through our four different community colleges and CSUMB as well. So we try to keep things as local as possible for you, but also give you the option to do um, nationwide opportunities if they are available remotely. Um, and then we have our skills and training resources, which I think is definitely one of our better <laughs> our best parts of this page for sure. Uh, so these are all different free resources we have to be able to help you develop your skills. And the reason this is so important is because if you've ever looked at a job description before and thought, I'm almost qualified for that, but I just don't quite have this one thing, this is where you're going to come to find that one missing piece. So maybe it's Google Analytics that you don't quite understand, or they're looking for you to be advanced in Excel. You can come here and use our resources to get matched to different opportunities to gain that training so that you can be certified in those and be able to get those positions that you are looking for. Uh, job scan is a really great tool if you're looking right now, if you're somebody who has a completed resume, you're trying to figure out how to do your career shift, you can use the job scan tool to do a match. It'll actually show you what kind of jobs you might be eligible for based on your resume. Um, Skill Up Monterey is a really great free uh, resource that we have locally for students and uh, job seekers as well. Again, this is going to help to develop your tool set for you. And then we just have a lot of other uh, great skills development resources. Worthy at the bottom here is a really great tool as well. Um, Worthy will actually kind of search the entire internet for you to be able to find those online courses and match you to things that within Coursera, Udemy, so on and so forth, so that you can really get a full grasp on those online opportunities. Uh, then we also help you to explore careers and jobs. So Haley's going to talk about career pathways a little bit later. We'll also loop back to career coach. Um, if you're ever confused on how to use career coach, please come back and check out this video here. Uh, it's about a one minute video and it's, it's really helpful. But uh, in here, we're also going to have tools to help you get connected to those career pathways that you're interested in. So maybe you already have something in mind, you can search through there. Again, Haley's gonna flesh that out a little bit. And then we have some tools to help you on your job search. So LinkedIn um, and then Onward California is actually a resource that was built out in response to people who were impacted by the job loss from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so again, it's gonna offer a lot of opportunities to upskill, reskill, get onto your next career and see kind of where your skill sets uh, might fit or where you can kind of develop your skill set a little bit more for your next opportunity. If you keep scrolling down the page, we have resume and interview resources. We'll kind of loop back to these at the end of our uh, conversation today. We'll also talk a little bit more about Resume Builder a little bit later as well, but some tools for uh, remote interviews and then fair chance hiring practices all the way at the bottom there. Uh, but mostly I wanna hand it off over to Haley to be able to talk about those career pathways as I'm sure a lot of people in the audience today have an idea of Maybe they're where they want to head, but aren't quite sure how to get there. Great, thanks. So um, we've built out our site to try to provide you with local career pathways in our region and also with other options in the Bay Area, which is a commutable location. And then there's some really awesome career pathways that are available in all of California. Um, so we've built out this site with options to search by locations or industries that you're interested in. And um, if you don't even know where to start, you can also just scroll down and you'll see all of the uh, options down here. But let's say you have an idea of where you want to search. So um, if you want to search by county, let's say we're looking at Monterey County, um, and then we're looking, we could look uh, at all the different types of career pathways that have been linked to Monterey County. And so, for example, uh, Business is uh, part of the Digital Nest program. We could click on this and it would take us right into the Business website. 
Um, and so the goal of our site is really to, to provide links to get you to directly to the websites or the resources. So everything we have on here is gonna eventually link you out into uh, a different resource. And that's the goal. We want you to find these resources and we've kind of created this hub for you to find everything here. Um, let's say that you don't, um, you're not limited to a different uh, county, but you wanna search by industry. So um, when we look at industry, let's look at information technology as an industry that you wanna pursue career pathways in on, you'll see there's different options here. Um, and so let's look at, for example, Looker. So Looker uh, has some certification exams and um, different things you could learn about. And so again, this link would take you right into the website and show you uh, what kind of offerings they have and how you can be certified. Okay, um, we also have features so similar. We provide information about local scholarships. Um, so if you're a student looking for a local scholarship, again, you can search by either your location or your education level. Um, and so, Again, the site is built out to really provide you with local resources. So all of these scholarships are specific to the Monterey Bay region as opposed to searching through those large nationwide databases. Um, so you'll hopefully be finding opportunities that are only available to locals in the community and that will make the applicant pool much smaller and hopefully you will be more likely to get these types of scholarships rather than applying for a nationwide mm -hmm. scholarship. Um, so let's look, for example, um, at the high school level. Let's say you're a high school student looking for a local scholarship um, and you're going to search through and maybe let's see this Latino generation scholarship. And again, it should take you right into the web page for the scholarship where you can then find out information about their applications. And it looks like they have one for both high school and college. So if you clicked on college, you would find this as well. Um, and then last but not least, in this type of database that we're showing you, we've also created a way to search on how to develop skills. So you can search again by location or by your age level. So you might be um, an adult learner looking for ways to kind of upskill or you may be a youth looking for youth type programs where you could um, kind of gain skill sets or get work experience um, or leadership experience. So we've built this out again by county and then age level. So let's say you're an adult learner and you want to um, find out about options. So here's one Center for Nonprofit Excellence has different types of workshops. Um, the Salinas Adult School has computer classes. And again, these types of things will take you right into the website where you can find uh, the calendar, for example, of all of their workshops. So the goal is to be able to have you find um, information and click right through to the resource that you want to find. Okay, moving on. Um, we've got some more cool tools to show you. So we're gonna go ahead and do a really deep dive into our Monterey Bay Career Coach tool. And uh, Megan's gonna lead us through that. Yeah, so Monterey Bay Career Coach is probably one of our most interesting tools. This is definitely a favorite of mine to use with all types of job seekers, students, uh, educators. I love showing this one off just because it has so many cool features. Uh, starting first with the career assessment, you have the option to take a career assessment that's about six questions or 60 questions. And by going through this, they're going to ask you um, just some things about interests, what you're interested in kind of going into, what you kind of enjoy, what your work ethic is like, so that you can get paired to, or they'll come up with a uh, assessment results that tell you kind of, are you social? Are you an entrepreneur? Um, you'll get a set of three and then at the end, it'll tell you what you might be most interested in. Um, so if we were to take the six question assessment, for example, which Haley has already done because she's built an account with us. So one thing to make it a little bit quicker for you is to be able to build out this account so that you it's completely free and it'll save all your results. 
your resume, everything else like that. So we see here that Haley uh, is an entrepreneur, she's social, and she's artistic. So those are her three main qualities. And then she can look to see what her career matches are based off of this assessment. So then they're going to give her, you know, a review and education and training that is not surprising <laughs> given Haley's background. Uh, so then you can click on, uh, you know, one of these careers that you might be interested in. So say we were to click on something like uh, health science, for example, if you click on that, it's going to open up and it's going to show you the different types of jobs that are available within that field, as well as how much you match to those. Now, of course, this is not a one shoe fits all. If you're looking at this and you're absolutely passionate about being a medical admin and you see this only means 58%, don't take this as that doesn't mean you shouldn't be a medical admin by any means. This is just to give you an idea of what you might be interested in to give you kind of that foundational starting sense. So if we were to click on something like the medical administration and support services button, you're going to then get an idea of what kind of field or jobs are available within this specific field. And again, it's keeping with that match. So uh, we're seeing the nutrition, mental health and substance abuse workers, patient representatives. So this is where you're seeing a lot of that social that Haley has come out as well. And then you can also see the medium salary as well as what kind of education might be required for it. So is this something that you're gonna need a master's or professional degree for? Can you do this with just an associate's degree? Can you do this with a bachelor's degree? And what is the earnings gonna look like for that? So if you're somebody who knows that you need a median salary of a a certain amount, what ones are you gonna look for there? So as you saw, Haley clicked on patient representatives here. You can then see the median salary and this is giving us uh, region wide selections right now. So this is uh, specific to the tri-county area being San Benito, Santa Cruz and Monterey County specifically. But we could also go in and if Haley were to click on region, she could make it specific to just Santa Cruz. And in that case, we'll only see uh, responses for just the Santa Cruz region or San Benito, or if you wanted to make it even wider and go to all of California, you could do that as well. Uh, so lots of options here. You see some things change as she switched over to uh, all of California there. And then it's also gonna give you an idea of um, what the job openings look like. So these are all of the openings that are available uh, within the region and then again programs are available uh, so usually there's a few different programs that get listed uh, i picked one unfortunately that that only has the cabrillo listed for right now uh, but usually you'll be able to see the four different community colleges and what kind of programs they have available for you to transfer with or to obtain your um, associate's degree and, and start your position so if you go to about on the uh, tab here it'll tell you about what the day in the life looks like for a patient representative so what is it that they're doing? What's their education look like? And you can kind of look through here and see, is this something that would be interesting to me? Would I want to coordinate communication with patients? Um, and kind of read through those to get a, a grasp on what this might look like. And then you can look at the education attainment level. So again, this is gonna show us what's the average degree that most people in this role have. Are they going for master's degrees? Are they stopping at a bachelor's degree? Um, what am I gonna look at in terms of finances for education for this? And then the skills. So we talked a lot about skills earlier. We're gonna talk a little, or it's gonna show you the skills that employers are asking for. So again, things like data processing, that's something you could definitely build up if that's something that you're right on the cusp of. Um, a lot of us have data processing skills from just being in school in general. So think about that too, how you might have those skills and then be able to see how frequently people are using these skills as well and, and what's the likelihood. And then it's up at the top there. Uh, we also have the wages. So this is one of my personal favorites because it's always fun to see the wage increase, right? <laughs> so uh, you can kind of get what the S, what the average is that people are making. And then again, see if this is an industry that is continuing to grow. So this looks like a good one to be in as we see that wage continue to go up for workers. And then same thing with employment here. You can kind of get an idea of what this looks like. So right now, I know that's a big thing on our mind with COVID is what jobs have job security? So being able to look at these and see when are the peaks and valleys of when this job was doing really well, when does this job maybe struggle to hire people? This one's a pretty steady one where there's, it always seems to be hiring. Um, and we can see that it's probably gonna have another spike based off of its, <laughs> its chart here. Uh, and then companies posting jobs. I think this is really neat too. Again, within the Tri-County region, this is giving you an idea of what kind of companies you could work for within the Monterey Bay region. Uh, and then employment projection, again, just giving us kind of an idea of what those numbers look like. And again, this is a growing field. So 
Um, that's always good news too. And then our final section of this is going to be the live job postings. So live job postings are pulled directly from Indeed and ONET. So these are all positions that are available right now. And if Haley were to click on that first one there or just any of them, these would link out straight to an Indeed posting so that you can see it live, um, active postings, and you can go ahead and submit those applications as well. So uh, all of this is gonna be able to pull that for you. It's just another great way to start your job search as well. And then going back to the main page for uh, Career Coach, we also have the opportunity for you to do a couple other things within Career Coach. So maybe you don't want to take the career assessment. You know, you're set on what you want to do. You've decided that you want to go into nursing, for example. So if Haley were to search uh, nursing or click the all uh, browse all careers, this would take us right back to that kind of example of what we saw with the career assessment. So again. You can open these up, look through and see what the median salary is, what education looks like, what you do in that job, what employment trends look like, and those live job postings again. So um, be sure to throw this onto your list of you know, job, <laughs> job resources as you're searching for a new position. Yeah, and I will add, um, if you don't take the career assessment first, you won't see these matches. Um, so you can still, as Megan said, research different careers, but if you do take the career assessment, it is helpful for you to then see like which, which uh, occupation in nursing would I be a better fit at. So it looks like I might be a better fit as a nurse midwife than as, um, or even just a nursing instructor because I have high education match rather than doing something like a nursing assistant. Um, so it is really helpful to start with the career assessment, and it's also really helpful to start by creating your profile um, so that you can save all your results. And I think that Haley makes a really good point with that too. When I was going through school, I started in interior design because I thought that it would be cool. I was watching HGTV when I filled out my, uh, my college application. And then I got into my first classes and I realized it was a lot of geometry and math that I was not ready for, which I think in taking a career assessment, I would have seen that I am not analytical in the slightest. And so it probably wouldn't have shown up with a strong match. I would have looked a little bit harder at what does this entail? What does education look like? And saved myself maybe about a year of school there. So always good to kind of do some, some background research. And then uh, we can also search by programs too. So say, you wanted to go into you know finance or something this will allow you to search for those programs and see which uh programs are available at the different community colleges and Haley, if you have a better uh example that maybe shows hartnell and mpc and all the other ones feel free to put that in there too perfect yeah so by browsing all programs you can go through and look at the uh different uh, opportunities that they have. And again, listing out if they're at Cabrillo, if they're at Gavilan, Monterey, uh, Peninsula College, or uh, Hartnell. So, and I think that's something that's really great about our region as well, is that, you know, if there's something at Hartnell and you live in Monterey, is that something that you'd be able to go commute to? And same with, you know, Gavilan and Cabrillo, a lot of things are within about a 30 minute radius. And with things being online right now too, um, always good to look at as well. So these will link out straight to the page to help you figure out how to apply for this position, what tuition looks like, uh, as well as the programs that are available too, so that you can kind of start preparing your uh, community college pathway. And then uh, the last feature that I'm gonna talk about on Monterey Bay Career Coach is going to be our veterans uh, match tool. So you can go through here and do a military search. So if you have served in the military, you can select your branch. Uh, which for this one we're going to select army and then your status if you're currently enlisted an officer uh, and then put in your military occupation code and this will actually match you to jobs in the civilian sector that very closely relate to what you were doing uh, in the service or are currently doing in the service so you can get an idea of what that's going to look like when you get out or when you're planning for your education um, to give you an idea of maybe some things that already use your transferable skill set and Haley's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, Resume Builder, which I think, again, is one of our really great tools. So I'm excited for you all to learn more about that. 
Great. So as I mentioned earlier, I highly recommend if you want to use this tool, again, it's all free, start by creating a profile. All you have to do is sign up with your email. The reason for this is that it'll help you save all of your work. So you can save your career assessment. You can save um, any programs or careers you're looking at. So this is mine. And you can see I already took the assessment and it saved my uh, top three traits. And it also has the option for me to download a full report list that gives me more in-depth information um, about all of these different um, types of traits. And then as I'm going through the site, I can save things. So I've saved a bunch of different careers that were of interest to me. Um, and I also saved a bunch of different programs that I might be interested in going back and researching or applying to. Um, and the site actually allows you to not only, as Megan said, view the program information, you could see how much it's going to cost to go to that community college and how do I apply to just start to be a student at MPC. So um, the profile is really helpful. We encourage everyone to sign up. Again, it's free. All you need is an email. Um, and also within your profile is where you will start to build your resume. So you'll click on my resume. You can save multiple resumes here, and this is all saved online for you. Um, so, you know, if your computer crashes or something, you still have all of your work here in Career Coach connected to your profile. So, for example, I might have a um, multiple resumes because I'm applying for different types of positions. So I have one for a marketing intern, and then I want to start maybe a new one that's for some other type of um, position. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this and give it a more unique title. So um, let's say I want to be a tutor. Um, so this is my tutor resume. Save that. And I um, can put in all of my contact information here. That's very easy. You just click edit and then you add in your contact information. And now I need to add some of my work experience. So I go to add work experience. Um, and let's say I'm, I already have some work um, as a tutor. So I'm gonna put in tutors. You'll see that the site populates for you um, work tasks associated with being a tutor. So I can easily go in and just click on this, the descriptions I've already done. So things I've already know how to do. Um, we encourage you to be sure you, you know, read these as you're adding them into your uh, resume builder. You can always modify them later, but you wanna make sure you're not checking off things that you say you've done, but you haven't actually done. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to put in some of these and then I'm going to also add a custom task. So maybe I was responsible for, um, I trained to tutors, uh, to support staff, something like that. And I'm going to add that. And then I also need to indicate where I was a tutor. So let's just say I was a tutor at MBEP and, um, that was in Marina. And I started um, last year and um, I currently work here. Okay, so that's how easily you can put in a position. So I'm gonna save and close. And you can see here now, um, I have my tutor resume, contact info, and I just inputted that I was a tutor. And here's the, uh, here's the description of the work experience that I did. You can also add in your educational history. So you could select the degree. Um, maybe you did a vocational training. Um, and I'm gonna say I did that. Uh, let's say I did a WordPress training and I did that um, in Santa Cruz. And um, let's say I did that through Harbor High School. I guess these were some I had demoed before. Um, and I did that last year. So I could add in stuff like that. Um, you can add more than one. So you can have multiple things in here. Maybe you want to put in your high school or your college, some additional trainings you've done. Um, and then let's look at what skills I should be adding to my resume. So the really cool thing about this is um, I'm a tutor now, but let's say I want to be a teacher and that's what I'm applying for. Um, so I could select, 
let's do this one, kindergarten teacher. So I could select a, my desired job and see here, what are the relevant skills? If I have any of these, I should be including, there's a lot of them, I should be including in my resume. So um, let's say I have experience with these things. Um, then I could also look at my work experience as a tutor. Is there anything I know how to do as a tutor that is a high match for the job I want to apply for? And you'll see these little uh, purple kind of lightning bolts. Um, they indicate a skill that matches my desired job. So um, if I want to be a kindergarten teacher and I have any of these skills, I should add them in because it's gonna be a really good match for the job I'm applying for. So let's just add a couple of those in um, and then I'm gonna save and close. And so you'll see it really helps you articulate your skill set and transferable skills that you might have. And then you can add any professional links. For example, um, maybe I did a video tutorial or I worked on a website um, something like that, I could add the title and then add the URL. So for right now, I'm just gonna add our website. We'll, we'll just say that, you know, that's a project I worked on, save and close. So now I've added a few things into my resume. Obviously you probably wanna add more than one work experience. And we also encourage you to consider adding anything you may have done, um, volunteer experience, um, things like that you can add into your resume. And then when you're ready, you can go and actually download your resume and it should show you um, a nicely formatted resume that, as I mentioned, you could then go in and further edit. Uh, you could tweak the formatting, maybe you want to add some different things or change something, um, but you can see here, I now have my resume. So that's the resume builder. Um, I think we have time to talk about Monterey Bay internships next. Yeah, so that's great because you can use your resume that you just built on Monterey Bay Career Connect to go to Monterey Bay internships and apply for some of our positions. Uh, so Monterey Bay internships is geared more towards college students. Uh, typically they're 18 and up is the requirement for these internships. So keep that in mind when you're looking. Um, high school students will talk about ways that you can get involved in just a little bit as well. But these are all internships that are available within Santa Cruz County, San Benito County and Monterey County. And right now it's a really great time to look for an internship considering they're remote. So those geographical boundaries of, you know, oh, I don't wanna commute all the way to Hollister from Carmel totally feasible now, right? You could just log onto your computer and jump in and start working. Haley and I work remotely from, she's in Santa Cruz or she's in Scotts Valley and I'm in Pacific Grove. So we're about an hour apart, but we work simultaneously together through our remote connections as a lot of us are doing right now and you're seeing with your schoolwork too. So this is great. Uh, right now we have about, I think 40 positions posted for Monterey Bay internships. Since the site's been built, we've had a thousand different postings. Uh, so we're at 36 right now. Uh, so lots of opportunities out there for you, but we've had a thousand postings since the beginning of the site. So we get lots of postings from lots of local agencies looking for students like you. An internship is a great opportunity because it can lead to a full-time opportunity either with the organization that you've been working with or with a different organization that values that work experience that you've had. So there's a couple different ways to search and you can see that we have all the boxes checked off right now. So that's why we're seeing all of the different internships that we have available. We have a different, a couple different types of internships. So there's unpaid with stipend, um, there's unpaid, there's remote work, part-time paid, full-time paid and commission-based. You can choose if you need to be somebody who maybe only looks for paid internships, you could then go ahead and remove the unpaid option knowing that those aren't gonna work for you. Uh, and then maybe you're saying remote work is what I need to stick with. So you're gonna keep that there. And then you can go through and you can search by region if you want to. So you can change regions and have it be just your specific county if you want. Um, and then you can change it depending on category as well. So uh, depending on what industry you're interested in going into, say you know that you wanna go into social, social services, you could search for just that or uh, marketing's a big one as well. Um, and then if we search it back to all regions, uh, if we go in and if you were to type in keywords, so say I wanted to do the keyword marketing, 
uh, I could see all of the different marketing internships that are available. Uh, and we're going to see tons of different ones. Social media is a huge one that we almost always have a posting for. So if you even know a little bit about social media, I would say go on there and apply. There's a lot of different organizations that just need somebody who understands Instagram. Um, it's as simple as that, right? You don't have to be a social media expert per se, unless that's what they're asking for, but go in and read the job description. So say, for example, if we were to click on the uh, community builders for Monterey County internship opportunity, the communications design intern, we'd be able to go in and see what is within this uh, application and this this internship so uh, you'll be able to see the website up on the top right hand corner you can click their website you can go to their facebook we also have their social medias available uh, and then you can also go in and just apply straight for the internship or again you can log in so same thing as monterey bay career connect make a free account be able to sign in save your resume upload your resume to as many different postings as you're looking for uh, and be sure to read through these qualifications, right? So you want to make sure that you're matching your qualifications and your experiences as closely as possible. So if they are looking for somebody who is looking for, you know, internship exper or inter Instagram experience, you want to make sure that you're listing on there how many uh, Instagram posts you've made or what your experience is there. Have you done a story takeover for your, uh, for CSUMB or for Cabrillo College, what does that look like? Um, so really give them those experiences like we talked about in the um, resume building portion as well. And then when you go in, you can also, uh, when you sign in and log in, you can also save these. So you can do a bookmark and you can also do a uh, job search agent. So anytime something with marketing comes up, you'll get an email saying, hey, a new internship has been posted. Um, so when you go to apply for the internship, and Haley, I'm not sure if you're logged in, so this might have us log in. Um, I'm, I'm not logged in. I'm, I'm logged no. in. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So when you go to apply for the internship, they are going to ask, we recommend including the cover letter. Um, a lot of people think, you know, I'll oh, skip the cover letter. It's just recommended. It's not required pretty much just, I would say, consider it required. It always looks good to add the cover letter, even if you're nervous about it, just giving them an idea of why you're interested in them. So, you know, community builders of Monterey County, say you're a student in Salinas and you're passionate about your community and helping to bring the community together. You wanna to make sure that you're mentioning that in your cover letter, right? Telling them why you're interested in the organization and why you wanna be part of their team so that you can help them as well. So. Again, internships are a really great way to kind of get started, get your foot in the door uh, and uh, get a little bit of experience under your belt in a more professional setting. Yeah, and if you have questions about internships or how to use this site, there's also, um, there's a Q and A at the bottom, which is pretty helpful. It has a lot of information for students about internships. Um, so like general things like how to create an account and all of that, but there's also information about how to make sure that you, um, you know, like check the legitimacy of an unpaid internship or if it's an internship a scam, um, working with uh, your college for college credit for your internship. So there's, there's things in here for students as well that are helpful. Um, and these are all uh, drop downs so you can see we've provided information for students here. And um, we're not gonna leave you hanging with just our resources. So we have also some information we wanna share with you guys about um, thinking about, you know, applying for internships or jobs. And so I'm gonna let Megan take it, uh, take it away with some of these tips that we've put together for you guys. And just as a side note, um, this video will be available to you. We will email, email it out to everybody who registered to attend. We will share these slides. So um, we're gonna share a couple slides with you on job and resources for um, different events that are happening and how to work remotely and do, do interviews remotely. Um, and then we will also share the slides with you with all of these links and um, I'll let Megan take it from there. Okay. Yeah, and you can also um, check out, we'll, we'll loop back to this too, but on our uh, Monterey Bay Career Connect page, there's the marketing materials page and you can go in there and view all of our videos and we'll have this video loaded on there too if you 
can't find it in your email for some reason, but uh, talking a little bit about uh, job seeker tips. So I know that's something that's on the front of everybody's mind right now, right? That's why you're here. You want to learn a little bit more, get some more information. Um, these are two of my favorite <laughs> tips for job seekers. So one of the biggest ones you can do is utilize informational interviews. So uh, if you've never heard of an informational interview before, it's a really a uh, kind of informal interview in terms of it's not you're applying for a job or you're not interviewing for a job. You're interviewing somebody to learn about their position, how they got to their position, what tips they would give for you to you as a student, you know, what kind of internships you should look for, organizations you might look for, volunteer opportunities. 70% uh, of jobs are actually never listed online. So informational interviews is how we um, or how we unlock those different opportunities, right? So those hidden opportunities. Um, I actually got my my job that I have right now with MVEP through an informational interview with Haley. Um, I found her on LinkedIn and reached out and asked if I could talk to her a little bit more, learn about what Monterey Bay Career Connect does. And of course, it wasn't an instantaneous thing. There was already somebody in this position. Um, I talked to her, I think, in January of 2020. Uh, March came around. I was home from uh, my master's program, I asked, is there anything I can do to volunteer? Um, and she said, you know, actually our workforce development associate is going to leave in a few months. Would you possibly be interested in that position? So then it was, you know, July and I was starting, this was seven months <laughs> since we had had that conversation, but she'd remembered that I was interested and remembered that I was looking for a position come the end of my program. So um, definitely, you know, keep in touch with those people link up with as many people as possible. The LinkedIn alumni tool is really great. So this is something you all have access to as students. Um, and this link that we have on here actually links out how to, how to use that. You can uh, connect with fellow alums, see who has been in programs like you, who has careers that are where you wanna be so that you can reach out to them for informational interviews to ask. Can I ask you just a few questions about how you got there? Um, and of course, we want you to join our Monterey Bay LinkedIn group. So we do have a Monterey Bay Career Connect group on LinkedIn. This is filled with employers, educators, students, other job seekers from across the Monterey Bay region. So this almost works as kind of your like internal LinkedIn alumni tool because you can go on there and you can see all the different members. Maybe there's somebody in there who you want to connect with who works at an organization that you're really excited about possibly working with. You can say, hey, I saw that we're both in the Monterey Bay Career Connect group. I uh, just went to their presentation, you know, learned a lot about their resources, would love to connect with you and hear a little bit more about what you do and how I could get to your job one day or your role one day. Um, and remember that your experiences can also be unpaid experiences. So we talked a little bit, uh, or Haley talked a little bit in the resume building about putting in those unpaid experiences. So volunteer work is one of the best ways to do this. And we have tons of opportunities to volunteer in Santa Cruz. Monterey and San Benito County. Um, if you are a high school student, you want to look specifically for youth volunteer opportunities um, and don't feel dissuaded that, you know, you can't have an internship quite yet because you're not 18. There are tons of opportunities out there. I was just looking, uh, we had a question in the chat about what do I want to do if I want to go into human services? I'm currently in high school. Um, Santa Cruz uh, Volunteer Center has a youth services section that you can go to and just looking through that they have volunteer opportunities for youth as tutors, um, as readers to help people and kind of in those future human services capacities, right? Anything you can do to work with other people is going to be helpful for that kind of position. Same with Monterey County, San Benito, you can always get involved with a hospice group. Uh, CASA is a really great one that's court appointed uh, service associates or sorry, some advocacy, um, of course. Um, and so you work with uh, people there and uh, as well as our fire relief efforts right now, there's a lot that are still in place um, as people are still recovering. So be sure to click through those. And then Haley, if you wanna flip to the next page. Oh. Um, and then we also have opportunities on um, <laughs> coming up here. So we have our Hire Together Bay Area Virtual Career Fair. Uh, so this is throughout the Bay Area, and this is, I think there's 25 different community colleges involved in it, uh, definitely ours within the region, and that's on November 19th from 1 to 3, and it includes employers like um, Bank of the West is going to be there, Tesla, Raley's, U.S. Bank, uh, East Bay Mud, um, lots of other opportunities as well, so tons of organizations, agencies that maybe aren't in uh, Monterey specifically, but very, very close uh, or are in Monterey and you could get involved there. And then uh, Grow with Google is a big 
program that Google is doing right now to help people skill up and get prepared for their careers. You can develop skills for working remotely on October 28th, so tomorrow, or ace your next job interview on November 10th from 10 to 11 a.m. Um, and they actually have a whole program going with that, so I'm sure there will be plenty after November as well to help you with those. And then tons of tips here for remote interviews and uh, working remotely just to kind of get you situated and get you comfortable in those remote settings as you prepare for that. Yeah, and we'll share the link to those Grow with Google uh, workshops in the chat so that you could register today even if you want. The rest of these, we'll provide all of these links available when we send out this slide deck um, to everybody who's registered to attend. And with the Hire Together Bay Area Virtual Career, we still don't quite have a link for that. So be sure to follow us on social media because we'll be getting that on our Instagram very soon and in the LinkedIn group. Um, and then we also have additional resources for LinkedIn. You know, a lot of times students are asking, how do I navigate LinkedIn? How do I even get started? Um, LinkedIn Learning is a great tool that all of you have access to as students. So make sure you tap into that. We've also given you resources on how to create a good LinkedIn profile. Cover letter is another one that gets really scary, right? Um, but they're really, really approachable. Um, a cover letter is just a really great way to show why you're interested in a company and why they should be interested in you. It's very simple, two to three paragraphs, uh, typically like three paragraphs. The first one is about why you wanna work with them. Second being why you'd be a good option. And the third, just wrapping it up with a thank you. And I look forward to hearing the, for you, to you. So these are all some step-by-step -step guides and step-by-step -step tips to help you with those. And then um, resumes, job scan, uh, as well as some information on how to write the perfect impact statement. Uh, and that's brought to us by Google and then some LinkedIn learning tips on writing a great resume as well. So these are all to kind of cushion the uh, resume builder. You build it first on resume builder and then go back and double check that you've got everything you need with these different tools there. And then be sure to join us on social media. So uh, anytime you need anything shared, if you are a uh, somebody who works for one of our local colleges, please feel free to send it over to us and we'd be happy to promote it. Uh, Monterey Bay Career Connect or Monterey Bay CC is how you're gonna find us on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, then we have our Monterey Bay Workforce Development YouTube channel. So this will also link out when you get the slides. And lastly, our Monterey Bay Career Connect LinkedIn. And then we have some things on our uh, Monterey Bay Career Connect website as well. If you wanted to be entered in to win Haley, what's the prize again for the one minute survey? Or is that for, oh no, the one minute survey is anonymous. I'm sorry, for Monterey Bay internships is the prize. My bad. <laughs> um, but, survey on our website, which is anonymous. So we can't send anyone a prize because we want you to be able to answer, you know, um, with your opinion. And we would appreciate everybody's feedback after you've had time to review the site. Um, it's just to help us improve and gather feedback on any additional things that could be added to the site. Um, if you love it, give us, you know, five stars. It lets us know we're on track with providing you guys with helpful resources. So we appreciate that feedback from everybody. Yeah. Um, and then any questions? I know that we've got one in the chat right here. So let's see. So there was a question about um, the links being shared and we will be sharing this, this slide deck that has all the links um, and additionally in the chat feature, some of the links of the, of the websites we've been directly referencing such as Career Connect, Career Coach, Monterey Bay Internships, our marketing materials, which is a link to all of our videos. We have a bunch of video tutorials, which you're welcome to check out. They're all short, you know, within um, one to six minutes. And then um, we also shared out the information on how to register for those Grow with Google events. And we will share the um, Hire Together event once they have the website and the link up and running. We'll be sure to email that out to everyone who registered for this um, webinar. And then we have a question in the chat from Sam. Um, it says, I'm a bit confused about career affairs. This is a great question. Um, are they mainly to get interviewed and hired? Or are they also useful to learn about jobs and what employers are looking for, informational interviews, et cetera? What happens at a virtual career fair? Uh, they just transferred to UCSC, not ready to get a full-time job. Um, so how do they you know, navigate that? Um, so that's a really, really great question. Um, 
it can be a mixture of both, right? So it's a really great way to go and network, regardless of if you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, great way to go and connect with companies, really great way to get your resume in. Typically what it is, is it's kind of just a first connection so that you can make those follow up in an email, say, hey, it was so nice meeting you at the career fair. Um, it's really, I almost feel like career fairs are more helpful for the student than they are for the employer because it's kind of like you get a shop for your future employer. So you can go around, you have you know, 50 different employers there. You can sort oftentimes by what kind of organization they are and then go and ask them a little bit about that and why you might be interested in it. Go and introduce yourself, get that foot in the door. It's kind of your way of, you know, if you have a friend of a friend who refers you for something, it's like you're that friend of a friend. So you get to be the referral for yourself, make that first impression uh, so that you can really make that that first uh, connection with the employer. So I would encourage you to always, <laughs> always attend a career fair if it's available. And this also loops me back to something I forgot to mention. Uh, if you are at our four different community colleges or UCSB or uh, MPC or even Middlebury and you're on this call today, remember that you all have really great career centers and career counselors that wanna help you as well. So we're a supplemental resource to help them help you. Uh, but ultimately, there is a piece of the puzzle. They're going to be the face-to-face -face interaction that can help you one-on-one -on -one with resumes, cover letters, interview techniques, uh, learning more about career fairs. So if you haven't been to your career center yet, be sure to pop on in and say hi and set up an appointment. So we have a couple questions coming in about our student ambassador program, which makes me so happy. I didn't know people would be interested. Um, so Megan, if you can maybe share the link directly to our um, Monterey Bay Career Connect Student Ambassador webpage um, that provides an overview of, of the entire program, not specifically the listings. Um, our program, we do accept students on a rolling basis. We're always looking for students who are interested in working with us directly. Um, we have several different initiatives at MBEP, so you might be working directly with me and Megan. We also have interns in um, climate action change, potentially marketing or housing, uh, or working on grant research with us. Um, so we uh, always encourage you to submit your application and apply. Um, even if we can't take you at that time, we can hold on to your resume and reach out to you once we do have a project that we're looking for students to work with us on. Um, so go to our um, mbcareerconnect.org uh, student ambassador program. We just shared that in the chat. You can learn more about that, that program and how to apply in the way that it works. Um, and feel free to send us more questions. I'm putting uh, Megan's email in here so you can email her directly about it as well. Um, yeah, great. And we're, we have a little bit more time to take a couple more questions if anyone has any additional questions. Yeah, and uh, following up on that, we had one that in the chat that asked if the student ambassador program is offered every year and if it's open to Cabrillo students. Yes, it is open to um, all students across the Monterey Bay region that are 18 and older. So make sure you check that out if you're interested in. Um, and yeah, definitely if you're at one of the community colleges, don't knock looking into internships. I um, was transferring in between going to UC Davis and leaving my community college. I did an internship with Monterey Bay, uh, or not Monterey Bay, Monterey County, uh, their human resources department. And that has made me so many different connections. Um, that was one of the first people I sent an email to when I started at MBEP was the Monterey County group. So never give up the chance to take an internship. Um, and don't think that because you haven't made it to a four year yet, you're not eligible for an internship. You are more than eligible for an internship as a freshman, sophomore, junior, whatever level you are at the community college as well. Yeah, and just to refer back to one of the earlier questions about um, wanting to be an intern somewhere and you don't see that they have a live posting up. Um, I think generally speaking, most employers are always really happy when a student reaches out directly to them and says, I'm really interested in your organization and I'd like to be an intern. Here's my cover letter and resume. Um, and we just had an intern who reached out to us and said, I think I might have missed you know, the application deadline, but I'm really interested in working with you. Um, and we were like, sure, we'll find work for you to do. We're always happy to have students working with us. And I think most employers are going to be the same. So it doesn't hurt to try and reach out. And even if they're not ready for you yet, they'll probably hold on to your resume and keep you in mind when they're um, ready to open up their internship again. So that'll just put you kind of top of mind for them. And we had another question in the chat about being 
under 18 and wanting to get involved, um, I put into the chat the Santa Cruz Volunteer Center list for the Youth Serve project list. So there's lots of projects there. I know Monterey County as well as San Benito County also have uh, something similar in terms of where youth can volunteer. Um, and that will be included in our, um, those are part of the links that are in our, our uh, PowerPoint at the end here too. So you'll be getting that as well. Um, but yeah, lots of opportunities to volunteer and get some work experience even under 18. Um, okay, I think we're kind of wrapping up on the questions. I do want to share one final announcement. So um, some of you may be aware the Monterey Bay Economic Partnership hosts every year our annual State of the Region event. And this year we're inviting students to attend for free. It's a virtual event. We have about 60 comp tickets for students. That's valued at close to $60 a ticket. So if you're interested in attending our live event, um, We'll share a link in the chat to that event and um, you can email Megan directly and express your interest. These tickets are reserved for students. So you do need to um, send your, your request to join from your student email account because we want to make sure we're actually sharing the tickets with students from the region. Um, and that event's going to cover a wide variety of topics. Uh, we'll be talking about fire resiliency, COVID-19, um, affordable housing, all of the kind of things that are um, really important issues in our region. And so we would like students to attend and get more engaged with the um, work that we're doing for MBEP as a whole, not just our Monterey Bay Career Connect resources. So um, thank you, Maya, for sharing the link in there. And if you're interested in attending with a free comp ticket, um, email Megan directly and let her know and we'll work on getting you guys a ticket. And I see a note, students from PVUSD are not able to send emails outside or receive emails. That's, you could just email us um, from your Gmail or whatever account and um, we'll, we can work with you on a way to, to verify that you're a student. All right, I think that's it. So we appreciate everybody for joining us for all of your um, thoughtful questions for participating. We will be sharing the slide deck with you and a link to our recording. And we encourage you to share these resources widely, share them with your fellow classmates, family members, uh, fellow colleagues, teachers. Um, as we said before, the site is free and we just encourage everybody to utilize it um, and take our one minute uh, feedback survey. In fact, Megan, if you could put that in the chat so everybody has a link to the survey, that would be great. Um, it's, it's literally one minute or less to, to complete um, and we want to make sure we're capturing good feedback from people who are familiar with the site and using it. Um, and so with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, wait till we get that last link in the chat. Um, before we wrap everything up. Oh, one last final question. When will the regional event take place? Uh, good question. So I believe it's December 2nd and um, you just need to email Megan to express your interest. Um, December 2nd, 930 to one. Thank you, Maya. And the link to the Survey Monkey is now in the chat. So we'll wait, we'll hang out for 30 more seconds just so people can go ahead and grab that link. It is also on our website. Um, on the home page, there's a huge uh, ticker tape that says, you know, take our one minute survey. So please go ahead and do that. And we appreciate your attendance today. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll go ahead and end now. Take care.